department of state washington d c on the fifth floor of this building is located the nerve center the communications department here twenty four hours a day wires flash the messages to and from the trouble spots of the world korea tokyo berlin trieste on the night of april ninth nineteen fifty a message arrived on the direct line from bucharest romania not since the code message from korea announcing the crossing of the thirty eighth parallel had a message meant so much its code name was the semper project Buttrick. Yeah? I have a message here you ought to see. Have Luke meet me in the screening room immediately. Yes, sir. Yeah? Mr. Luke, will you meet Mr. Buttrick in the screen conference room? Right away. Ready on the teletype? Yes, Mr. Buttrick. This is to be coded to the Paris Embassy. Yes, sir. Semper Project, Washington to Paris. Buttrick in Washington. Ready, Paris? Immediate need for experienced courier. Must be reliable man. Top secret mission from Secretary of State. Paris time. I make it uh, 726. Mike could handle this okay. Assign Kells. He is to be armed and given the following instructions. Besides, how can I? Wish they chained these things to your wrist the way they used to. Maybe you'd get some sleep. About five minutes, do you figure? Should be. We're in the landing pattern now. Bonjour, Mr. Kells. Hello. Kels. Oh, Mr. Chinnery. How are you? Oh, Bill. Mike. You're to be relieved here. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Why the red carpet? I don't know. It was uh, very nice of you. I'm afraid you won't think so. You're on your way again. Oh, tell me that he's kidding. I'm afraid we'll have to hurry. The plane's loading now. Are you, will you put this bag on flight seven, please? So long, Bill. Nice to see you, Mike. 
Unless I'm mistaken, you do know Sam Carew in our legation in Bucharest. Sam Carew? Well, yes, sir. We were together for three years in the Navy. Which one of these is Carew? Are you serious? Yes, I am. That's Sam. That's right. Now, you're to meet him on the Salzburg railway platform. He'll be on the Arlberg Express. Your orders are to take what he'll give you and fly it back to Washington immediately. Are you armed? Armed? You are now. Treat it as routine. Well, the weather report's fair, so have a good flight. Catch up on your sleep. Good luck, and again, my apologies. Okay, sir. It's just the tonic I need, a ride in an airplane. Oh, bonjour, Monsieur Ken. Good night, Zizi. And don't wake me till we get to Salzburg. Mm -hmm. Madame? Is there anything else? Oh, I'm really sorry, but this is the last seat we have. When I'm asked to sleep, I wouldn't think of disturbing. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Madame. Oh, can't be helped, can't be helped. Monsieur Kills? Monsieur mm. Kills, mm. the chair is occupied. At this moment, while diplomatic courier Mike Kells was on the plane bound for Salzburg, the man he was to meet was on the Arlberg Express. Still behind the Iron Curtain, the Express was nearing the last checkpoint between the Soviet and the American zones. Sam Carew, carrying the document known as the Semper Project, occupied a compartment in the Bucharest sleeper. Have you a match? Certainly, we'll see. Oh, good day, good day. I'm sorry. Excuse me. What time will we clear through into the American zone? Approximately 10.30. There is no delay. Thanks. Like your orange juice now? Well, must get I like a babe in arms. No, no, I'm really ashamed. I had no idea. I was so completely bushed. And that was rather amusing. You aroused all the mother instinct in me. It's nice of you to take it that way. How long did I? Holy oh, smoke! We'll be a half hour late. Half an hour. Well, if she loves you, she'll wait. She is a train. Oh, a train. It's a 20-minute ride from the airport to the depot. As it happens, I'm getting off in Salzburg, and they have a very fast car meeting. No, 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 I wouldn't. Going right into town, practically past the station. Please, don't get any wrong ideas. You're an American, aren't you? Well, patriotism has so little to do with it. I'm just naturally soft-hearted. And soft-shouldered. Why, thank you. John Ross, hello. Mike Kells. Now, let me guess. Uh, New York? San Francisco? Richmond, Indiana. <laughs> 
Oh, you're kidding. Well, honest, country girl, corn fed. You could have fooled me. Some corn. I might have to take you up about that lift. That's all settled, so relax. You busy businessman, good grief. I thought I'd seen everything. Two watches. Isn't that overdoing it, little? Well, not in my... Maybe you're right. You don't run by the clock. <laughs> Me? Nary a watch and nothing but time. I just sort of rattle around. Completely unscheduled. That must be wonderful. Oh, sometimes. Just now, it's a lazy ten days in Salzburg. The festival. Mozart and a hundred violins. Oh, ouch. Why, you don't like violins? Oh, fiddles. Why so many? One, maybe. Who doesn't? Uh, in the right place. Gypsy. Salzburg is, well, sort of a romantic pilgrimage. I'm visiting all the places I've lived in with my husband. You throw a nice block, Mrs. Ross. I didn't particularly mean to throw a block. No. Hmm. Does that make the picture any brighter, Mr. Kell? I told you, oodles of time. How can I thank you? Oh, don't be silly. You run an elegant taxi service. Uh, might a girl hope you could have a change of mind? Would she look like a fool sitting by the telephone all afternoon, waiting for it to ring? <laughs> Well, I, I have to meet this man, and then uh, after, I won't be available either. I never knew I could hate my job so much. I'm really grateful, and it was a pleasure. Really? Even the part I was unlucky enough to sleep through. In a world of roses and mink and... But no time. And two watches. You know, I could even have taken the fiddles. Oh, not fiddles, Michael. They would have been violins, I promise you. But uh, I get around Europe quite a lot. And if you get around... I do. Shall we hold the thought? Let's. Good luck. Coffee, please. Hello, sir. Yes. Please listen. His Excellency will permit. Sorry, I have some people joining me. Oh, pardon me. Please wait. 
Das wollen wir noch mal. Mr. Carew? Yeah. Telegram. Thank you. Sam. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I...
I seem to have been assigned to share this with you. Terribly sorry if I disturb you. That's okay. Bother you if I smoke? No, no. Have one? No, thanks. Is off. Nothing unusual for a European train. Don't disturb yourself. Oh, what is the matter? Oh, we don't know yet, sir. We try. Do you know this man? Samuel Carew, of the American legation in Bucharest. Oh, an American. Most unfortunate. Carwheel sure made a mess of it. Not before something else did. I'm Michael Kells of the American State Department. This train will have to be held while you assist in an immediate investigation. But, Mr. Kells, I have no authority. I assure you an investigation will be conducted en route and the American authorities notified as soon as possible. Now, unfortunately, the track has to be cleared. Well, I'm going to stay right here, so just throw my things off the train. Certainly, sir. I leave a man here to assist you in every way. Peppy, you stay here. Come along. I'll stay if you want me, mister. There's an MP station back near the last town. I can get some of the boys. All right, thanks. Back through the tunnels the fastest, I guess. I'll leg it. Good. Could be murder, Mr. Kell. Only could be, Colonel Cagle. Well, trains have been known to make unscheduled stops before. Train crews have left doors unlocked. Light fuses have been known to fail. A man accidentally stumbles through an unlocked door in the You mean that to look like an accident? And in the American zone to make it neater? Look, sir, there was no blood. No blood? Not where we found Sam's body. Now, I put it to you, if a man is crushed by train wheels, he bleeds on the spot. Uh -huh. Therefore, Sam was not killed by the train wheels, but before. Well, let's go in here. You're observant, Kells. Your eyes are okay. We're trained to keep them open, Colonel. I hope you've been trained to keep an open mind to match. It's gonna be useful. A man's dead. That can't be helped now. Who killed him has to come second. Because the important thing is why he was killed. Colonel, whoever ripped these linings sold them back in a hurry. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, this is Ernie. Uh, Mike Kells. All right. Glad to know you. I've checked every item in this with Washington this afternoon by telephone. A document of tough secret value is missing. He was supposed to hand it over to you on the Salzburg platform. Where is it? Well, I, I told you. I know you told me, but where is it? I hope you're not of the opinion that I... can't I... afford opinions. I deal in facts. And a very unfunny fact is that something very vital to our government is missing. Oh, I assume Carew didn't give it to you. If he had, you'd be in there on the table, not him. But that doesn't answer the $64 question. Well, it's pretty obvious where it is, isn't it? Do you know that they succeeded in getting it? 
Oh, no. Well, neither do I. Kells, I, uh, understand you're the courier service's pet carrier pigeon, huh? Six years, never dropped a message, is that right? Seems I've dropped one now, though, sir. I'd like to pick up that document if they haven't got it, wouldn't you? What are you driving at, Colonel? I'm a postman, not an intelligence man. Do you think it's possible that the girl could be mixed up in this dirty business as well as those two monkeys who are telling you? Now, look, all I know is that Sam got a message just before that phony stop. He saw the girl, and five minutes later, he was dead. Awful useful if I can find that girl. Would you know her again if you saw her? It isn't likely I'll ever forget her. Well, there's a transport out of the airfield that can get you to Trieste in time to meet her train. You might be able to have a very interesting conversation with that girl. I'm sorry, Colonel, I'd like to, but well, you know how it is. I'm under orders. Oh, I've got it all fixed with the Chief, if that's it. Of course, if it's something else. Look, you, you don't have to do this. Of course, I know Sam was a good friend of yours. Now, wait I a minute. Presume. You want me to go to Trieste, meet a train, and talk to that girl, right? That's it. All right, let's quit the build-up. How do I get to the strip? Take a jeep? I've got a taxi and a reliable driver. Here. You'll need some Italian currency. No, I'd better get it from the consulate. Now, take this. Awful sorry I won't be there to eavesdrop on you and that girl. Well, uh, where will I contact you? Oh, I'll pick you up when useful. Just find the girl and talk to her, understand? It'll be a pleasure. Thanks. I wouldn't want to be him. What's that? You ain't sending him to find any dame. You could take her in an hour if you wanted her. You're setting him up as a duck to find out if the Soviets have got the message. He's the only lousy lead I've got in this lousy case. This isn't ping pong yes, we're playing. Get me the embassy in Paris. Well, all I know is I wouldn't want to be him. The other guy got killed. Ernie, before you got this plushy job with me, when we were in the commandos, how many times have you seen one man sent out to get information that might save a thousand? But without telling him? Uh, would he feel any better if he knew? Go faster, can't you? No. Come on, come on. Go on, faster. Faster. Go through. Give me a lift to the airport. You in trouble, chum? Oh, it's you. Yeah. Kind of a lucky idea you had. I was beginning to get worried. Here come your friends again. Aren't you going to do anything about them? Why, sure. They'll be picked up and kept under surveillance. That's the idea. They chase the rabbit, and we chase them. Oh, and I'm the rabbit, huh? You're getting it. Great for the rabbit. Now, look, fella, the colonel's got a dirty job. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this move at least proves that they ain't got it either. What was that? The blonde. From the train? And they put up dynamite in a pretty package. How did that get in my pocket? You don't know. Come on, come on, she'd give it to you, you can tell me. Or she could have. Or Sam could have planted it on me when he brushed by me in the corridor. Or those monkeys, or, or anybody. The lights went off, remember? No. Looks like somebody's got your hotel in Trieste all picked out for you. Well, at least Kegel will know where to send for the rabbit's body.
I've seen in the world. This is my first time for Trieste. Yeah, it's quite a ball. What Lisbon and Istanbul were to the last war, Trieste is to this. Agents, counter-agents, hatchet men, Titoists, anti-Titoists, Stalinists, anti-Stalinists, and 10,000 British and American troops trying to teach brotherly love to the Italians and Yugoslavs. More hijinks than a circus. Any news from the airfield? It's what I came to tell you. Taxi's waiting. How far in minutes to the railroad station? Depends on your driver. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Kells, but if you tell me the name, it could I, help. I don't know the girl's name. I'm sorry, sir. Well, do you have a reservation for anybody who hasn't showed up? I'll see. Do you have a reservation for a man named Carew, Samuel F. Carew? Yes, he had a reservation, arriving on the express, but we haven't seen him. Well, well, do you have a reservation for anybody else from that same train? Oh, yes. Yes, we were all in a room for a Miss Janine Betke. Janine, that sounds about right. Well, I guess the only thing for me to do is to wait around. Now, if this girl or anybody else asks for me, call me. Day or night, call me. Thank you. Uh, for my record, uh, how long will you be with us? That all depends. Where you do something about missing persons? All depends on what sex and age they are. It's a girl, all right. She doesn't look to me like she's missing a thing. Pete, wouldn't you say she's got it all there? Mamma mia. Hey, oh. wait a minute. What's your connection with her? My connection? The connection's what I'm trying to make. I mean, state the reason of your inquiry. I'm Mike Kells, diplomatic courier. I'm to talk to her for Colonel Mark Cagle, CID, in connection with the death of Samuel Carew. It's confidential. Was she mixed up in that? It'd be a fair country guess. Oh, no wonder she ran for the bushes. She what? Well, about 20 miles up the line, we check on all people coming in by train. And during passport inspection, she got wise to the fact that we were suspicious of her, and she managed to give us the slip. Is that her? That's the right girl. Janine Betke. Yeah, but a phony passport. So if you run on to her, be sure to notify us. She's listed here as an entertainer. I wonder if she'd have nerve enough to try to get a job in one of those nightclubs. No, well, we've checked everything, but she hasn't shown up yet. Thanks. Sure. And when I see you, my heart begins to beat, to beat, to beat, to beat, to beat the bands. Ay, 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 see, 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 ay, 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 see, 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 the one for me. I'm rather proud of our good neighbor policy. And speaking of good neighbors, here comes Betty Davis. <laughs> in your seat belts. It's going to be a bumpy night. <laughs> Senta. Play my concerto. Do you know the meaning of a slow gin fizz? Uh, yes, senor. Make it two, darling. Joan. I would have died if you hadn't known. But Joan, I thought you were in... In Salzburg, I was for two days. The longest, 
dreary? Darling. Hey, look, I'm calling you darling. I've been making progress. Have you been making any progress, darling? Now, you'd be amazed what progress. Where are you staying, Michael? At the Imperial. What? I don't think Celsius is nice. Why don't you move? No, I, I have to stay where I am. Shall I move? <laughs> All right, I'm going to lay my cards on the table. When I started on this crazy tour, the last thing I was looking for was a man. Why should pick on you, I don't know. And after I know you better, I may not like you a bit. But I kept thinking about you and started looking for you. I phoned all over and Tony Bettis in the Paris Embassy found out for me you'd come here. Michael, it was exactly 11.45 a few days ago when you left me. What time is it now? I'll check both watch. Well, it's, uh, it's exactly 11.37. Well, do we resume at, heaven bless, 11.37? I don't. Look, Joan, I, I'd like nothing better in the world, but I'm in a spot right now. I, I, I'm sort of tight. Michael, tell me the truth. Are you with someone? No. No, I'm chasing her. My dream girl. Can't be helped, can't be helped, can it? I apologize to you, Michael. I'm, no, no, no. I'm truly sorry. I'm only kidding. I'm just doing this for an acquaintance of a friend of mine. I promised to look her up and, and see about her. You have to see about her tonight. It doesn't look as though I can tonight. Oh, darling. Let's explore Trieste together. They tell me it's a terrible place. It's ghastly. They got a wind here they call the Bora that blows strong enough to blow a man down. I wish you'd blow our drinks this way. We've sure got ourselves a slug-footed waiter. Hey, look, I'm with those people over there. They're much duller than you are, but they got far better manners, so I'll have to lie like the Dickens. Especially that one guy. He's a captain of his soul, thinks he's a mate of mine. You know the kind, so I'll have to be nice. Darling, can you wait two minutes? Yeah. Oh, well, I hardly can. I'm a goner, darling. Yari, want to buy a good watch? No, 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 thanks. I, I have a... <laughs> Not uh, this one? I got it from a very interesting person in the old part of town. Where did you get that? Eight Via Capitolina. Eight Via Capitolina.
is it? What do you want? Who are you? A very good friend of Sam Carew's. Well, don't let me rush you, Miss Betke. I can wait in the... You're my cat. That's right. Excuse me, come in. But you are glad to see me. Come in, Mr. Kelts, please. You don't need to do that, Miss Betke. I didn't bring anyone with me. And there's no one here with me, if that's what you're wondering. Well, under the circumstances, you don't mind my making sure, do you? No, I'm only surprised. Here. I wouldn't mind. Please believe me that there's very great danger. I sent Chirinko to find you. Didn't he give me my message? Little pint-sized character. Yes, I asked him to say that I desperately... Well, he left in a hurry. It turned out that he had an appointment to get killed. He was... That's right, his timing was a bit off. You'll be sorry to hear that the car got him instead of me. Are you suggesting that I tried to have you killed? After you helped kill Sam Carew. Does the idea revolt you? You are making a very great mistake, Mr. Kelts. Sam was my friend. I loved Sam. Is that what he was doing in your compartment five minutes before he was murdered? Letting you be his friend? What do you think I am? That's one of the things I've come here to find out. Who put this in my pocket? Where did you get that? Sam took this. I didn't ask time. you who took it. I asked you who planted it on me. Did you? No. Who then? I don't know. It must have been Sam. Yes, of course it was. Why Sam? So that you'd go there and, and you and I would meet. You and I? Yes, he told me that, that if I needed help, I was to contact you. But you got off the train. You, you weren't here, so I hid out. Because the MPs are looking for you on a passport charge? Do you think I'm a child? Oh, no, Miss Betke, I don't. Not at all. And where did you get this? Did they take it off Sam's body? Was this a part of your pay? You are terrible. Sure, I'm terrible. And Sam's dead. I'm shocked how terrible. Okay, okay, you're shocked. I'm terrible and Sam's only dead. You! But why should you believe me? Even you. But you drive me crazy with all your questions and your insults. And, and you don't give me any time. Take all the time you want, sweetheart. Church is giving you some nice music to go along with it. You Americans, you've never had to live with the, with the shame of having an enemy take over your country. You should pray to God that you never will. We plan to do more than just pray. There are only a few choices open to each person when that happens. You can submit because you are helpless or, or you can do something rash and get yourself and your family killed or sent into slavery. Or you can collaborate. Would it make you feel any better if I said I did? The truth might look good on you. All right, I'll say it then. I worked with them because Sam told me to. For almost four years I worked for Sam as an agent, as a, as a spy if you prefer, while I pretended to spy on Sam for them. Sam made me a bargain. I wanted freedom. He was generous enough to say that it was a fair bargain and, and he tried to keep it. So he took me on the train with him. He, he said he'd get me into the United States, but, but now they've killed Sam and I don't know what to do. Well, that's quite a story if you've made it up. It's quite a story if I didn't. Try living with it as I've had to. Hoping you'll find somebody named Mike Kells who's a friend of Sam and will help you, but, but you won't believe me. Nobody will believe me. I, I can't expect it. Look, I, I'd like to. It, it'd be pretty lousy if what you were telling me were the truth and I didn't. Look. If you were with Sam on the train, maybe you can clear up a few riddles. Why did he try to avoid me? Because he knew they were on the train. I, I recognized two of them and told Sam. 
Well, if you knew them, did they know you? Yes, but they would assume that I was doing what I'd always pretended to do. I didn't talk to them. I, I didn't dream they planned to murder him. Look, Miss Betke, if you were with Sam, what happened to what he was bringing out with him? To what? What document did he have with him? Document? Yes, if you worked with Sam, what was it? He didn't say anything about any document. I don't know. Do you know? Oh, did you get me up here to try to find out if we have it? Is that it? No, I've told you everything. Look, Miss Betke, I want to believe you, but you don't make it easy. That's too bad, because that's why Sam gave me his watch. He said, if you are ever in trouble, go to Mike. Show him this, and he'll know that I sent you. May I show you? This dent on the back. That's from shrapnel in the attack which sank your minesweeper. Then you two were in that rubber raft together for ten days without water. And when you both thought you were finished, you prayed like a boy at your mother's knees. He said it about you lovingly, to show that the fear of death can make a man into a simple child. But only Sam could have known about that. Oh, it wasn't always like that. You had a lot of fun together, too, like the time you were on leave in San Francisco, and, and you both were very naughty, but... The next morning, you kissed the lady judge and got you both off. He used to talk about you so much that I... that I thought I knew Mike Kells almost as well as he did. He loved you as, as only some brothers love. Okay, Miss Betke. I'll go along with you. I may be a sucker, but I will. I'll do everything I can for you. I'll take you to Colonel Cagle and we'll... They're coming here. What is this? Get out the back door, quickly. Oh, no, I'm going to stay right here. I'm I curious. I know them. I know how to handle them. Please go. Oh, here. What did you find out? Find out? You came a little early. Sorry, I was a couple of minutes late. It's all right. <laughs> Where have you been? Waiting around for you to find your girl. Took you quite a while. We've had her staked out for a couple of days. Well, you might at least have told me. It was important to see what they do about you. Well, they didn't do it exactly gently. But then they're not exactly kind hearts and gentle people. What did they do to her? Why to her? Because I don't... The little watch peddler tipped you off to her whereabouts, huh? Before he had it from that car in front of the club? Yeah, she sent him with Sam's watch to tell me that she needed help. How come the girl had Carew's watch? Look, Colonel, we've got this girl classified all wrong. That's so? Completely. She isn't one of them at all. She worked for Sam as an agent. That's what she said, huh? Well, that's what she did. She told me things that only Sam could have told her. But she's worked for him for about four years. That's rather startling. Well, what's the matter? You got that file there, Ernie? You asked me to get it out, didn't you? I'll well, show it to the man. Let him go way out on a limb, saw him off. Read it, Mike. Informative. What is it? An account of some of the activities of a known and proven Soviet agent from our Bucharest files. You don't mean Janine Betke. Well, for your sake right now, I wish I didn't. But she's been on our Soviet list for quite a while. Would you like to know who put her on? I have a sinking feeling you're going to tell me it was Sam. That's right, Mike. But it's hard no, to realize. Don't blame yourself too much. She's an appealing dish, no doubt. Most bad women are, one way or another. That's why they could be so successfully bad. I remember a dame in Portugal during oh, the last war. Now, dry up, Ernie. 
Did she talk about anything else besides her troubles? Anything about the document? No, but I'm afraid I told her enough to let her know we're looking for oh, her. That's okay. They know that. But nothing else, huh? Only the sob story. Well, then we'll put her down as looking too and call it 6-2 and even. It won't be even until I can catch that lying. I think we'll be just a little careful about letting you see her again. Yeah, maybe you're right. Try to put me back on the mail route. Nah, you're doing fine. Say, would you like to see who walked into her place when you went out? Ernie, show it to uh, the man. Razumny Platov, chief of the Soviet secret police for Europe. Well, we've made them call in their first team. I'd give a nickel to know what he and the girl talked about. Say, haven't your boys got a wire into her apartment yet? Well, she never goes out. They got half done when she slipped out to the marketplace this morning. If she ever stops sitting like a hen on a nest, they can well, finish. Well, get them going. I want to hear every word she says. I want to hear it if she breathes. I have them every day. Mike, uh... When I got permission from Washington to borrow you, I was instructed to let you know the score. These people have murdered a representative of our State Department. That's going a long way, even for them. You mean I don't carry enough life insurance? No, for the time being, they're just as interested in keeping you alive as I am. But if they get the document, or if you're in their way when they think they can get it, you can lose, Mike. Well, the only thing is, it's only natural to want to know, what's all the hot and bother? What is it? I was given permission to tell you that, too. Sam was bringing out with him the complete communist timetable, including the date for the invasion of Yugoslavia. Well, you can understand the value of that information. Pearl Harbor tripled in spades. And you can understand that having that knowledge could save thousands of lives, and that Washington can't very well be concerned with a life or two along the way. It's likely Sam Carew gave up his life deliberately. Yeah, he'd do it, too. Yeah, let's hope not uselessly. He must have figured out some way to get the document through. Microfilm. Could it have been in the watch? In Sam's oh, watch? Oh, for the love of common sense, Mike. Would the Russians have sent it by a two-bit messenger just to lure you up to pass the time of day with Janine? No, I'm sorry. Let's talk about something more in your line, huh? Who's the girl? Who? At the club gala, the nice, uh, eager beaver in the romance department. Now, you know everything. You tell me. Joan Ross, her name? That's right. A widow, huh? She was married to someone in the State Department. Ah, Clark Ross. Consul here and there. Killed himself. Bit of a mystery there, but nothing against her. What does she do? Just works at having fun. <laughs> Has it, too, I'll bet. Anything else? She comes from Richmond, Indiana. I met her on the plane from Paris. And... Well, you'll find this out anyway. I fell asleep on her shoulder. And now she can't wait to go to sleep on yours. Huh? Why don't you take her to lunch? No, nothing doing. Now, why get her messed up in this? Mike, in this business, creating a false lead can be just as important as a genuine lead. The more people you see, the busier they'll be, and the uh, more chance of their making a mistake. Because they've just naturally got to do something about anybody you contact. No, if I'm in this, it's my own business. But she's a woman. And it's lucky for her she's sore at me. I stood her up last night. A thing like that just whets her appetite. She'll meet you at one o'clock at the National Cafe. I called her up and asked her for you. Don't you stop at anything? She's an American, isn't she? Let her do something for her country. Fun's fun, darling. Let's have all we can. But if you're trifling with me, Michael, I'll cut your heart out. But I've tried to tell you I had to work. All night, I rang your switchboard dizzy. Tell me the truth, Michael. Who's the woman? Who are you mixed up with or what? Oh, you, you ought to keep away from me. How can I? I simply can't. You started by arousing a mother instinct in me, and now you got the whole work stirred up. And you've got something stirred up. Well, you, don't you feel anything? I feel a lot. Feel yeah, I feel that you're beautiful and attractive and screwy and wonderful, and I'd like to see you keep that way. The only way to do that is to stay away from me. <laughs> don't get mad at me, darling. I have the most wonderful day planned. We'll have a heavenly sail on the Adriatic. It's warm enough to sunbathe. Or if you prefer, we'll go for a drive out to Miramar Castle. We shouldn't miss it. The Emperor Maximilian built it for Carlotta. There's the military commander has now, but the gardens divide. Michael, where are your thoughts? Right here. I hope so. Because tonight I'm giving a cocktail thing for you. A few people I know and all their friends. Oh, there's uh -huh. scads of nice people here. There's some of them over there. <laughs> and that captain. Come on over. I want you to meet them. I want to show you off. Sure, I, I'd like to. You go ahead, I'll get the check. Hello, Joan. Hello. Want a cab? 
captain. Oh. Hello, darlings. I want you to meet a very good friend. <laughs> I did have a friend. Thank you. You've been gone much too long. <laughs> Silivri Kamak Dod Yodzi Silivri Kamak Dodzi Hey. You ever see that girl you came in to ask about? Uh, no. No, I haven't. Well, there's a special on her, so if you find her, don't forget to notify us, huh? I sure will. Buonasera, signor Kelly. yourself at home, why don't you? One thing I'll say for you, you make this job pay off. Your widow lady's been on this ten times in the last hour. It's a cocktail party. I don't want to go. Don't knock it, brother. Me. Me. Tell her you'll send me. Mike, Hello? I've been on you for two hours. Yes, Joan, I just as minute got in. Well, I, I can't come right now. I'll be along. Mike, I'm going crazy. Well, is anything the matter? Something's happened to me, Michael. Something I don't understand. Well, what's happened? I can't tell you like this. Isn't it enough that I'm terrible? Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll be right there. You fought a good fight. That louse kegel, I warned you. Huh? Now something's happened to her. Yeah, what? Well, didn't you hear her? She'll tell me when I get there. That puts it right in the line of duty. <clears throat> Some duty. Signora? Joan, what is it? What's the matter? Don't you want to tell me? I doubt if you would care. Every time I turn my head, you run out on me. But of course I care. I think I must be out of my mind. I got my life all tangled up in yours and now. Oh, look at me. I can't stop. For the love of Pete, Joan, what is it? I was almost killed. Somebody tried to shoot me. Oh, you're kidding. Go look at the window in my bedroom. Where? In there. This could have come from that building across the court. Who lives there, do you know? No, and darling, get away from that window. I don't want you shot at, too. Maybe you're right. Joan, there's probably a very simple explanation for this. Someone was cleaning their gun and it went off. Michael, you're using me. Using you? Don't deny it. Haven't you gotten me mixed up in something? Something I have no business to be in at all? Well, that, that just doesn't make sense. Look, I'm really worried about this. Did you hear anything? I heard it bury itself in that wall. I think I heard the glass. They must have used a silencer. Now tell me everything that you remember. Everything? Well, first I waited half an hour for you to come back to me. Then I began to get the strangest feeling that I was being watched. And when I finally left, was being followed. Well, did you see anyone? I dismissed it as ridiculous. I decided that I'd let you upset my nerves. So I hoped that if I took a little nap, I might forget my fears. I lay down right here. I'd hardly gotten my head on the pillow when it happened. Well, maybe they didn't mean it for you. Oh, do be serious, Mike. I am serious. Look, don't misunderstand me. I went for you, heaven help me. And I still do. But you can't blame me if I'm beginning to question you. I know that normally you're a courier, darling. Now, what makes you think that? Why, the two watches, if nothing else. Have you forgotten that I was State Department by marriage, too? Oh, yes. yes. So naturally, I know they've gotten you mixed up in something. Something that isn't courier business. 
Now that you've gotten me mixed up in it, too. But I didn't want to do it, Joan. you did. Well, it's all right, Michael, really. But now that I'm in this so deeply, it's only fair to tell me what it's all about. Look, you have to trust me. I told you to stay away from me. You think I'm the kind of person who'd run out on you if you're in a jam? Oh, no, I want to stay with you. I want to share everything with you. I'll handle this. Hello? Mike, get down here right now, brother. Oh, wait. Who was it? It's for me, attorney. Michael. Don't leave me here alone. If I don't come back right away... No, darling. Call into the CID and ask for Colonel Cagle. Cagle? That's right. Trust me. You heal. You are an idiot. You're the idiot if you can't see what's going on. I'm not getting to first base. I've never had this trouble before. And there must be a reason. Listen to me, do you absolutely trust this Janine? I do not absolutely trust anybody. But why Janine? Well, now, don't say that I'm just a crazy dame who's falling for a guy and getting jealous. But he keeps slipping away from me to her. And if they're seeing each other, they can be working together. There's something between them. Can you trust her? It is very simple to find out. What's the matter? You got company. Who? Janine. Yeah? Over there, right there, flower stand. Any of her goon squad with her? I haven't seen anybody else. I wonder what she wants. She didn't come over and tell me. Well, we'll soon know. Look, I'm gonna take a walk down the street. You stay here and see if anyone else tags along. Now, take it careful, brother. You bruise easy. Now, more hearts and flowers. You'll be wise to listen to listen, me. Listen, I have listened. I didn't take this chance for nothing. And how I've listened. You mess around with me anymore, I'll break your neck. You found out about me, haven't you? That I'm a red agent. Well, I'm surprised that you admit it. Did they tell you all about me? Did they show you the file? Did they explain that Sam himself put me on the list? How do you know? Why wouldn't I know that Sam put me on the list? We decided together that he you showed. You and Sam again. What better protection could there be for me? Isn't it reasonable? How do I know what's reasonable? I found you only to say that I'm prepared to make a deal. What deal? With you and only you, to take it or leave it. If you come to my apartment... Oh, I... no, no. I've been to your apartment. I don't like what happens there, like getting slugged. We can't talk here. That's only Ernie. Go on, you're doing fine. You're fascinating me. Don't be tough with me, Mr. Kells, because I can be very tough myself. But I think it would be a very good idea for your sake as well as mine if we were friends tonight. Because it is tonight or not at all. Here's my key. What are you going to do when she beats you to all the answers? Yeah, what does she want this time? I don't know. Either she's the best liar who ever wore shoes, or she's straight and wonderful, I don't know. You know the way to the Via Capitolina? Now, Mike, you ain't gonna listen to... I wouldn't there do it. There are plenty of other taxis for hire. Now, Cagle won't go I for this kind of... I don't give a hang about Cagle. I'm gonna satisfy myself about this girl all by myself. Come in here. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Hurry up. Come on. You got that microphone planted in her place yet? Yeah, I planted it. Oh, good. You can imagine I'll be glad to have Cagle or some of the boys tuned in. It took her about 15 minutes to find it and pull it out. You're out of your mind to be going up there. Have you got a gun? Yeah. Flashlight? No. In that compartment. Here we are. Hey, Mike. If they do start something, try to bust out a window. Manage to do that no matter how busy otherwise. Then I'll come up. All right, well, if I bust it, get up there, will you? Yeah,
You didn't suppose I would leave it around for you to find? Well, you can't blame me for trying. However, this is your meeting. You said something about a deal. This morning, when I told you I hadn't known about Sam's bringing out a document with him, it was the truth. But I don't care if you believe that. I don't care what you believe anymore. Wait a minute. Are, are you trying to hint that you may have it? I'm trying to make it very clear that I do have it. Well, I'll hold comment on that. It were the questions you asked me which made me wonder whether I did have something. I, I searched and I found it. I, I hid it and I looked for you. You're trying to say that Sam gave you this without telling you about it. I can understand Sam's using me. He would have reasoned that I were the perfect carrier, being a known red. If they'd caught me and tortured me, if they must have tortured him before killing him, they would get nothing, because I would know nothing. He'd think that whatever happened to him, you and I would meet and, and everything would be all right. It wouldn't be like him to imagine that, that two people whom he loved... Excuse me. Oh, what is the document, if you have it? It's in code. I don't know what it is, but, but I know I have it. And what is your price, if you have it? To you or to the Russians? To the Russians? Yes. Do you mean that you'd you sell it? You think that's terrible, don't you? But just think about it again. If Colonel Platov of the Soviet MVD gets on to me, as he is sure to get on to me in time, then where am I? I think I can handle him because I have something he wants. And I know the price I'll ask him, my life. And do you know something? I'll take it. It's one thing to talk about giving up your life, but another thing to do it. I know what you think. I don't care what you think. I only think you're pretty human. I promise you I'll deal with them only if you force me to. But how, how could I force you to? I want what Sam promised me, freedom. If you'll vouch for me, if you get me into America as a free person, I will give the document to you. Get on your things. Let's go. Go where? Where's the document? We couldn't be seen together. I'll get it. You stay here. No, I've got a car. Ernie's with me. No, no. I'll meet you. Down the hill behind the ruins. I know a back way, the way I came. Don't answer that. If it's them, I'll put them off. Hello? Who? Sam! Are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm listening. Who? Mike's right here. He's with me. He... Yes, Sam, yes. Are you crazy? He is alive. Sam, are you hurt? Hello? Hello? Mike, he's right here in Trieste. Sam Carew's dead. I saw him dead. I just talked to him. He, he is coming right here. He says to wait here. He said, ask Mike to stay there. Oh, you're a wonderful sweetheart. You'd love that, wouldn't you, while your friends come pouring in? Mike! You're more than wonderful. You're superb. Mike, wait! Mike! I didn't lie to you, ever. You'll be so ashamed. will be here any minute. Right on schedule. Oh, what a dame. You look in her eyes and you begin to believe her. Well, you've got to. Then something funny begins to happen. You get knocked on the head or... Well, you know what she tried to make me believe just now? What? Sam Carew's still alive. Go back and babysit the widow, chum. This Janine's the key, though, somehow. She's a smart cookie, Ernie. She's smart enough to have it, to hold her people off, and to force them to deal with her. There was that spy dame in Portugal had everything. Did you? Only she crossed me for a guy who gave her diamonds. She went downtown. Why? She wouldn't have taken that chance for nothing. Now, she couldn't have kept the document in her apartment. She could have a contact or a place. Hey, I saw her come out of a building in the Piazza Grande. Now, Mike, Mike, you get your nose in the ring or the colonel will fry my hide. Get off of there, will you? Come on, get off! Keep the engine running. And keep your eyes open.
I'm sorry I'm a little late, I guess. We just remembered. I have to have my watch. We've got a plane to make. Watch? Yes. Girl brought it today. Blonde, my wife. Is it ready? I do not remember you. Oh, but I didn't come in here with her. But you remember, she wore a black coat and she had a scarf around... There it is. That's my watch, that one right there, in the middle. Have you the ticket? No, but I can describe the watch exactly. Look, you see on the back that dent? Shrapnel made that. It's a Navy watch. And the inscription says, to Sam, that's me, to Sam from the crew of the Reliance. But it is required to have the ticket. Yeah, but how would I know what was on it if it wasn't mine? I guess so. Sounds reasonable. Uh, Two hundred lires. Fine. Thank you. Good night. Signore, signore, thank you. Signore! Signore! I hate this much! Signore! my hotel right away. There's something I gotta look at in private. Yeah? Yeah, you'll probably give me the horse laugh the same as Kegel did. But I think I've got it. In that, or you've been reading the comic books? Yeah. It's one of those screw-type, hard-to-open cases. I look like an idiot rushing into Kegel and yelling Eureka until I pried it open to make sure. I'd open it in a dark corner if I was you. Where is Kegel now, do you know? Sam Carew's trunks came in today. I don't know if they're gonna open them at the depot or headquarters. I don't know. Yeah, well, stop at the lobby phone and get him, will you? Don't tell him I've got any ideas. Just where is he in case I need him? Well, darling, I hope you don't mind my coming here. Yeah, you're like flypaper. Well, how do you think I felt here all alone, waiting for another bullet to come crashing through my window? Well, why didn't you call Colonel Cagle? You tell me you'd come right back. What did you have to rush up into the hills to hurt? Look, I haven't time to discuss it or anything. I'm very busy right now. Well, I like being put out. Well, whether you like it or not, sweet, that's exactly what I'm doing. Go home, take off your spurs, and go to bed. On my tail worse than those Russians on the train. Don't bother, darling. Well, I'm... Uh... Yes, Michael, you definitely are. No, don't try it. You wouldn't make it. Just put it right here and rather quickly. Right there. Now get back. Go on, back. Is that the gun you used to shoot the hole in your window? No questions, please. I'm standing on the Fifth Amendment. Yeah. You're a long way from Richmond, Indiana. Oh, and please, no lectures. I gave them all to myself when I took the first step a long time ago. I pledge allegiance to my flag, etc., etc., etc. Oh, don't think I don't have one regret, Michael. You were very foolish, really. This could have been so pleasant. Oh, well. <laughs> Too late. This time, I'm walking out on you, darling. A widow lady. How you live and learn? If it isn't the cavalry. I'll take it. Put it right down there. Now get over there in the chair. Mike Kell's room. Is Mike there? Yeah, I just try to reach you. Kegel? Yeah. He wasn't there when I phoned. He wants to talk to you. Dear Kegel. Come here and hold her hand. Hi. What have you been up to? Oh, well, now hold on to your brass, Colonel. I've got something for you. I've got something for you, Mike. Sam Carew is alive. 
What? Sam? Oh, uh, Kegel, listen. Now, you listen. You saw a body that was smashed a beefsteak, and you convinced me it was Sam. Well, Sam's right here by my side. Would you want to talk to him? <laughs> Just tell him that I found his watch. I find... Uh, Kegel, what about Janine? Janine's here, too. Now, get these instructions. We're going after this pack of rats. Meet us at number 20 via Porter. We'll pick you up. And make it snappy. Right now. Great, eh? Yeah, I'll be seeing you. Michael. Oh, it looks like I'm running out on you again after all. It's my fate. And hey, look, you get around quite a lot, don't you? Well, the next time you're near Richmond, Indiana, there's a little drugstore there. It's practically the whole town. Well, drop in and tell them the last time you saw me. The little girl was doing great. Just great. Yeah, sure. Sam? Kegel? <clears throat> You're wasting your time. He doesn't have it. I didn't give it to him. This is difficult to believe. I thought you were a realist. I have it. I didn't have it all the time, but I have it now. Absolutely nothing. Nothing here, either. Dress him, get rid of him. Very well. I'm willing to make the deal. You'll meet all the terms. Enumerate them again, if you please. I shall turn the document over when I'm safely across the border. You will provide me with a proper passport and papers. Safe passage to the border, train tickets and boat passage. The money is to be paid in American currency. It takes a lot to surprise me, Janine. Surprised that I want so little? Surprised that you could fool me so completely. And I might add, it's a blow to my pride. Then the sooner it's finished, the better. I'll go to my apartment now and get my things. I'd prefer you don't take that risk. I've been in a doubt twice today without anyone knowing. Besides, I wouldn't dream of asking you to send me unattended. Agreed. See here, nobody has successfully hidden anything from me before. It's not part of the deal, but when you turn over the document, will you tell me where it was hidden? It isn't part of the deal, but is it absolutely necessary that you kill the American courier? You keep your part of the deal, and I'll keep mine. There's just one small favor I would ask. I was forced to pawn some of my clothing. This is a claim check. May we stop by and pick them up? I need my clothes. This is not in my instructions. As you wish, then. May I leave the pawn ticket as a gift to my concierge? It's a pity to waste good clothing, and she's been so kind to me. I'll write on the envelope only her name. Or if you like, you write it. Her name is Anna, A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. She's at the cinema tonight. Now, when we get downstairs, you yourself may place the envelope on her desk while she'll find it when she comes home. I leave it entirely up to you.
waking up. I'll take him some coffee. He ain't happy. I didn't tell him nothing. Will he be all right? Yes, he's coming around. They gave him a drug, but nothing very potent. Cagle? Send him along to the hospital later. We'll see he gets a good night's sleep. Cagle. Oh, Cagle, I blew it like an idiot. They got Sam's watch, didn't they? Take it easy. It's all over. It was the second phone call that fooled me. Yours, in, in your voice. Yeah, I didn't go for that first one that came into Janine's. All that malarkey about Sam, but when you called, oh, I was a chump. Oh, Mike, I was the chump. About your girl, about Janine. Yeah? You know, this job of mine dealing mostly with rats makes a man cynical. So I insisted on going by the record. You wanted to go by your feelings. Well, your feelings were right. She did work for Sam. And in the final analysis, she double-crossed the red. She gave us the document. We've got it. No. Where is she? Here, take some hot coffee. No, my... no, thanks. It's a strange way events can fall. You, you pound your brains making things fit into a logical pattern, and then something just happens like this. The concierge at Janine's place found it with her name on it. But inside, open it, Mike. Written on the inside flap is the real address. Mike Kells, care of Colonel Cagle, U.S. military government. But it was in here? Only the means of getting it. A pawn ticket. In the pawn shop, I picked up a piece of microfilm. But I was in a pawn shop. And the right one, brother. As a favor to his customer, the proprietor had cleaned the watch. Of course, he hadn't the faintest idea of what he had, and there it was, just lying in a drawer. Well, what did, what did Janine say when you told her? Hey, pretty lucky you didn't have it for the Reds to take off of you, huh? So that's it, Mike. Case closed. Your mission complete. Except the satisfaction of starting off Case the watch. closed? For you, maybe. But what about Janine? Where is she? I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? They didn't get her. You didn't let them take her, did you? Mike, I've told you all I know. But they were coming for her. That phone call in Sam's voice was to tie her down. And you know what they'll do to her. Well, let's put it to her credit that she knew that, too, and went with them of her own free will to keep up the deception as long as possible. But all she asked for was her life and a, a chance to get to America. I know, Mike, it's rough, but people lose their lives in war, and this is war. At least she saved a lot of other lives. It makes you feel kind of hopeful, doesn't it, that someone who wasn't even an American could care that much? Is that all you intend to do, just check her off with a few kind words? But I'm helpless, Mike. They've cleared out with her. Even if I knew where I could lay my hands on her, I couldn't do anything. She isn't even a citizen. I have no authority over her. The Soviets have. She's just another casualty in this Cold War. It's too bad, but that's the score. Well, it may be the score Look, for Look, be you. sensible, Mike. The only thing you can accomplish now is to get yourself killed. And they'll do it, too. They haven't any reason to keep you alive anymore. Like the Colonel says, it's tough on her. Not everyone dies on D-Day. I'll let Ernie take you to the hospital. I've got a phone wash. Come and see me tomorrow, will you? I'd, I'd hate to lose your friendship. I'd give him a break. He feels just Where as bad clothes? as you do, but I'll wrap you in a blanket for the ride. She'd bargain for her life and freedom, so no iron curtain for her. Ernie, what would be heading for a free country, Italy, Switzerland, or France? Simplon Express, but now, Mike, the clock's run out, fella. You heard what the Colonel said. You wouldn't be a pigeon this time. You'd be a very dead duck. Well, what have we made her? Now, are you going to get my clothes, or do I have to go like this? All right, come on, let's go, let's go, come on. What's the matter? Can't you go any faster? No! No! Come on! Come on, let's go!
Signore, do I have your ticket? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, I'm a, I'm a diplomatic courier. Your destination? Well, I, I don't know, not yet, just how far I'll be going. You see, I'm looking for someone, a girl. Yes? Yes, she's a blonde, a Czech. Stands about so high. I'm not even sure she's on this particular train, but if she is, you might have seen her. She may be in company with some Russians. Ah, uh, credo che sia la signorina nel compartimento numero 7, carro numero 12. Oh, it's probably the lady in compartment 7 in the next car, Excellency. Allow me to show you. No, 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 thank you. I'll find it. Thank you. understand my being somewhat startled. Sure. Take your time. Do you mind if I come in? Hello, Janine. Hi. You don't mind if I sit here for a minute with you, do you? Not particularly. I only came to offer the lady my apology. My very great apology and my admiration. You have more lives than a cat, my friend. You should know. Then I ought to tell you that, in addition to this, I have friends and compartments on both sides. Well, then, then you have nothing to worry about, have you? But you have. So run along. You boys stage the walkout. I wouldn't think of stealing your dull, tired act. Please go. No. You'll only get into trouble. She has a point. I doubt that. It'd be rather awkward if two dead Americans showed up in the same week. Two Americans who are supposed to be protected by international protocol of diplomatic immunity. So I doubt very much whether you'll kill me unless it becomes absolutely necessary. So long as you understand that if you do make it necessary, I will violate protocol with personal satisfaction. Speaking of personal satisfaction, Janine, I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear that I had a letter tonight from Anna. You really did? That's right. She sent you a message. She's very grateful. She'll do her best to show you how much. No, Mike. I was very happy to do what little I could. No, she feels that you deserve much more. And she's very stubborn about doing something about it. But I'm happy now. It's really all right. Please understand that. I do. We're going to stop. And while it is stopped, I suggest that you get off. Maybe you're right. Open the window. if I ever will. I feel as a dead must feel on the day of the resurrection. Eternally grateful. Hey. What the matter? Y you know something? This is the first time I ever looked at you. Really looked at you as, as just a girl. So it is. <laughs> 